the calculus controversy. Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz. Gottfried Leibniz was born on 1646 and he died on 1716. He was a German mathematician and philosopher. As a mathematician, his most famous contributions were the creation of the modern binary system and the differential and integral calculus. This is Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz. And as a philosopher, he was one of the great rationalists of the 17th century, along with Descartes and Spinoza, and is renowned for his metaphysical optimism. Denis Diderot, who di disagreed with Leibniz on several points, commented, perhaps there has not been a man who has read, studied, medicate, meditated, and written as much as Leibniz. What he has composed about the world, God, nature, and soul is of the most sublime eloquence. More than a century later, Gottlob Frege expressed a similar admiration, declaring that in his writings, Leibniz showed such a, such a profusion of ideas that in this respect, he is virtually a class of his own. Unlike many of his contemporaries, Leibniz does not have a single job that allows him to understand his philosophy. Instead, to understand his philosophy, it is necessary to take into account several of his books, correspondence, and essays. That Fried Wilhelm Leibniz was born on July 1, 1646 in Leipzig. It was born in the 30 years war just two years before this conflict ended. Gottfried's father was Federico Leibniz, who was a professor of moral philosophy at the University of Le Leipzig, as well as a lawyer. The mother was the daughter of a law professor and was named Katerina Schmuck. It is said that he had a great intellectual capacity since at the young age of 12, he was already fluent in Latin and was in the process of learning Greek. When he was only 14 years old in 1661, he enrolled at the University of Leipzig with a law degree. At the age of 20, Gottfried completed his studies and was a professional specialized in philosophy and scholastic logic, as well as, as, well as in the classical field of law. And for his first job after he graduated, Leibniz got his first work experience from an alchemist job in Nuremberg. His first contribution is about, was about calculation. Leibniz's contributions in mathematics were several. The most known and controversial is infinitesimal calculus. Infinitesimal calculus or simply calculus is a part of modern mathematics that studies limits, derivatives, integrals, and infinite series. And Leibniz presented their respective theories of calculus in such a short period of time that plagiarism was even mentioned. Today, both are considered co-authors of the calculation. However, Leibniz's notation was eventually used for its versatility. It was also Leibniz who gave the name to this study and who gave it the symbolism used today. The, sim the symbol for in uh, integral and dy equals y squared over two. Second is the binary system. In 1679, Leibniz devised the modern binary system and presented in it in his work, Explication del arithmetic binaire in 1703. The Leibniz system uses the numbers one and zero to represent all numerical combinations, unlike the decimal system. Although his creation is often attributed to him, Leibniz himself admits that this discovery is due to an in-depth study and reinterpretation of an idea already known in other cultures especially China. 
Leibniz binary system would later become the basis of computing since it is the one that governs almost all modern computers. Third is calculating machine. Leibniz was also an enthusiast in the creation of mechanical calculator machines, a project that was inspired by Pascal's calculator. The stepped reckoner, as he called it, was ready in 1672 and was the first to allow for addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. In 1673, he introduced her to some of his colleagues at the French Academy of Sciences. The steps reckoner incorporated a step drum gear device or Leibniz wheel. Although Leibniz machine was not practical due to technical failures, it laid the foundation for the first mechanical calculator to be marketed 150 years later. He also invented the infinitesimal calculus. The invention of, in, of infinitesimal calculus is attributed to both Leibniz and Isaac Newton. According to Leibniz notebooks, a fundamental event took place on November 11, 1675, that they used integral calculus for the first time to find the area under the curve of a function y equals f of x. Leibniz introduced several notations used today, such as, for example, the integral sign, which represents an elongated s, derived from Latin summa, and the letter d to refer to differentials from Latin differentia. This ingenious and suggestive notation for calculus is probably his most enduring mathematical legacy. Leibniz didn't publish anything about his calculus until 1684. <clears throat> the differential calculus product rule is still called the Leibniz rule for the derivation of a product. In addition, the theorem that tells when, when and how to differentiate under the integra integral symbol is called the Leibniz rule for the derivation of an integral. These are the sample, samples of his works. And for the second one, for the dy, regarding the dx and dy. And this is the third one. With a fundamental theorem, integration boils down to finding an anti-derivative. And Leibniz had a calculus for dealing with derivatives in terms of infinitesimals. This is still used in physics until now. For example, x equals y cubed over 3 and x plus dx equals y plus dy cube over three, and so on. With the fundamental theorem, we thus again square the parabola. The use of the infinitesimals dx is however tricky. One has to claim that in the last line, dy and dy squared are zero without making dx or dy zero in any previous line. This can be rigorously achieved by non-standard analysis, but this had to wait 300 years. The next step historically was to introduce limits. This work allows us to know the life of this famous thinker of those times, where he had participation and dispute with other philosophers for his thoughts and ideas, but this did not discourage his principles and thoughts. Thanks to his way of thinking, we use as much, we use much of his knowledge in various disciplines. We see that Leibniz's contributions are many and that he has contributed in almost all disciplines, but with greater strength in philosophy. This work is a compilation of Leibniz's work and biography. That's all. Thank you.